Hey, it's Mark with Mark's Virtual Real Estate Channel. I'm back with another video. Uh, today, I'm gonna talk about nodes a little bit more. I know we've been talking about that a lot lately, but I think it's really interesting in a way for people in the game to create their own kind of community and not rely on Upland to have collections or city releases. It's a, it's a way to have a lot of fun and um, see property values rise as well. Uh, on your own kind of creating your own stuff in the game, which I think is really cool So of course we love the likes comment shares um, New subscribers all of that keep those coming. I have my real real estate channel as well mark Ferguson invest for more um, So we just posted a new flip we bought last week uh, Posted about a three unit property one of the agents in my office is buying um, this week Which is really cool to see posted about the store that I have the liquor store and mini mart and the numbers and trying to keep track of that there So if you're interested in any of that stuff check that out and of course, we'll get right into Upland here. And of course, if you don't know what Upland is, it's kind of a virtual real estate game slash investment where you can put real money into the game, buy the actual lots in real life that are there, and then build properties as well. And cars should be coming soon too. And I'm a bit of a car nut, so that's cool for me. <laughs> All right, first off, um, yesterday I posted a video about the nodes are doing well. We mentioned Sunset, Century City, um, Lazy J Ranch, uh, Portage Park in Chicago. I'm sure I missed some other ones. Morningside in LA. And um, one I missed was the um, UAG Upland Auto Group, which is really cool as well, uh, part of that. And they're very small right now. So if you're into cars, that might be a cool one to check out as well. And then um, I also mentioned if I should start my own note. I had so many people comment and um, a lot of the Century City um, people came over and commented. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, helps my channel out a ton and kind of showed how much support you guys have for your um, node because I had like 50 comments. So that was pretty cool to see. And um, a lot of people said, hey, you know, running a node is extremely hard, takes a lot of work, um, hiring people, keeping it going. And I completely get that. So I kind of mentioned before, if I did start my own node, I don't think it would be like a full blown um, crazy, you know, business kind of like they've created in some of these other ones. It just kind of be a real low key, see what happens node. And um, maybe I'll do that. We'll see. Um, I might just start it a little bit today and see what happens, but it's not going to be like an official node. I'm not going to start a discord or do anything like that. Maybe later if it gets going, but for now it's going to be real low key and just see what happens. So <laughs> um, what am I doing? So this actually came from one of the commenters on my channel, my video yesterday. So thank you for that. I do listen to people. And someone mentioned too, if you're going to start a node, are you just going to pick like your favorite place and ignore everybody? And I could, I, if you start a node, that's the cool thing about it is you can start it wherever you want, right? Anybody can start a node. Anybody can just say, Hey, I'm going to start promoting this neighborhood. It's just a matter of, will it take off? Will you have the following? Will you be able to promote it enough for it to take off? Because I could start a node right now in just this random neighborhood right here. And maybe I'll buy some stuff there and nobody else will ever care or buy anything there. And that was just a random one. That's not what I want to do. So um, a few people said it'd be cool to have one in Detroit. And I think I agree with that just because I haven't heard of anything in Detroit yet. And Detroit has a very low cost entry right now. Um, so newer players, um, those with the lower net worth could take part in it too. And so um, some of the other nodes are very expensive to get into. Even the minting prices were very expensive. Just trying to buy anything, you know, was tough for newer players. So I think Detroit has some possibility there, but um, I, I don't know Detroit. I want to do a node where people can recognize the name and know where it's at. And, um, you know, be like, oh yeah, I've heard of that. That's cool. That makes sense. Where, there's a few. I mean, there's Henry Ford. That's kind of a cool neighborhood. I actually just saw that right now. So, oh, ignore all this. This is don't need to see that. Um, <laughs> so we'll see uh, what property prices are in the Henry Ford neighborhood. Look at that, seventy nine hundred, eight thousand. Pretty affordable. Mint price. Um, you know, pretty low there too. So that might be an interesting thing. And and the thing, other thing I've been looking at too is just how many properties are for sale. So this one has 120 properties for sale. So it's pretty small. Um, like the Century City node has like 40. So it's very, very small, but it's also a node. This isn't a node yet. If it became a node and had more demand, there's a good chance that 
property supply would dwindle because that's a very, I mean, this is a pretty small neighborhood. So that would be an interesting one. And look, there's even stuff you can still, oh no, what did I mean? I'm sure as small as it is and with a Henry Ford name. Oh, I have one here. Look at that. <laughs> I didn't even know I had a property. It's a, oh, it's from my grand. Okay. This is one I bought on Grand Boulevard as a collection. And it's in, wow, that might be a sign. That's kind of crazy. I didn't even know I had a property in that neighborhood. Hmm. All right. So I'm going to think about that one. Or maybe we start a couple different areas to buy stuff in. You know, by we, I mean me and the few people who watch me. <laughs> so, um, Belmont, you know, I just kind of looked for small neighborhoods that people might recognize. I don't recognize any of these. Someone said Rosedale Park. That'd be cool, but it's a collection already. And I kind of want to try to avoid ones that are already collections just because those already have some popularity and people will be buying there. I think the really cool part about a node is you can take an area that isn't a collection that maybe you think should have been and then raise prices, which I think is a pretty cool idea. So, um, like I said, I don't really know, haven't really heard of these. I even looked up the top, you know, most popular neighborhoods in Detroit. And of course, downtown came up, Midtown came up, um, Corktown came up. What were some other ones? Was it like East Market or something like that? Yeah. And a lot of those are collections already too. And so like I have some properties in Brush Park, but that's a collection as well. So I don't know. Um, you know, I don't want to do that one. And I keep selling stuff too. So that's pretty cool. Let's buy stuff that I think is a good deal and then list it for sale and it usually sells. So people ask me that, like, how do you sell stuff? I really just list it up for sale. I'm not doing anything special on it, but every once in a while I just check on here and say, Hey, okay, what's the floor price? Are there any like super good mint deals? That one's not bad, but not amazing. That one's not bad. They're pretty low mint. And that's kind of how I do stuff. And if I see, you know, super cheap properties, then I usually just buy them and we'll put them back up for sale, wait a while, and usually they'll sell. So that's just, there's a T that's, you know, kind of a cheap one on Woodward with a sort of low mint, but not quite that crazy. Just like in Riverdale in the Bronx, I just picked up one for 140,000 Upix when the floor has routinely been 180 to 190 Upix and saw that, snatch it up right away and we'll try and resell that. All right. So I think I've come up with maybe two places where I'm just going to start buying some stuff. Like I said, it's not like an official node. It's not like, Oh, I'm going to like promote it everywhere. It's just kind of where I'm just going to start buying things that look like good deals and then see what happens. And the really cool suggestion I had was eight mile road. So almost everybody knows eight mile. Thanks to Eminem. Um, it's got tons of gas stations. The other kind of cool thing too, is someone like, Hey, that could be a drag strip. And that is true because there's tons of gas stations It's kind of commercial. And while it's a very, very long road, right? It goes from all, you know, one side all the way to the other. I noticed this when people were minting properties in there for sale, there's not that many properties on it because one side is outside Detroit. And then most of the properties along here are fairly large. So, I had one on eight mile. Do I still have it or did I sell it? I can't remember. It would have been, oh yeah, I still have one on eight mile. So I have one here too. And that was when I bought before the collections were announced, I paid 59,000 for it quite a bit. Um, and that was, you know, that kind of shows the gamble of buying before the collections. And what is it? A chiropractor. If you're in pain, come right in. Talk about being direct. There you go. <laughs> so, oh, a pedestrian. Okay. So yeah, you buy, you hope it makes it into a collection. If it doesn't, you lose your money. That's why I don't like gambling on collections. Um, but it worked out really well in Detroit on other stuff I minted. So I'm going to start buying some stuff on eight mile and I'm literally going to do it right now. And I know I just showed you guys this and you probably saw that and got some hints, but that's okay. So you can see the sale price, the mint price. There's some stuff that's pretty cheap here. I mean, and oh, I was gonna show you this too. Yesterday they were 112. Yeah, there's still 112 for sale. So there's not that many for sale. So I think this is kind of a decent area. 
that could, you know, have some utilization, people recognize it, it definitely could become something in the future. And even if somebody else does it and it's not me, um, I'm cool with that too. Cause like a lot of you, I've said a lot and a lot of you said too, if you're really busy, um, starting a node is probably not the right choice, but <laughs> that doesn't mean we can't buy some stuff. Now, a lot of people too have, or not a lot of people, mostly one person, look at that mint 177, um, have, uh, one guy mostly said, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't play upland because I just buy the cheapest properties and don't pay attention to a mint price sometimes. And that is true. I do do that. Um, because if I'm reselling stuff right away, a lot of times I want the cheapest property because people will buy the cheapest properties. Make sure that's the right one. Yep. First. So if you get the cheapest one in the neighborhood, um, and you're reselling it, sometimes that's more important than the mint price or markup. Now, if you're planning to hold these for a while, um, and you want, you know, I'm just looking here. There's another cheap one, not that much more expensive, but we'll do this one, you know, hold these for a while and you think it's going to become something big later on, right? Then mint price kind of becomes more important because it does become a cool area that, uh, you know, lots of people hang out at and go to, Oh, uh Oh, Oh, that one's in jail. Is that the same one? 8129? It is. I think oh, it lets you buy it for that price. There was one from somebody who was in jail last time and it made me pay double the price for it. So I'd like to hear your opinion too. Is it bad to buy properties from people in jail? Cause I just did it. <laughs> so is that morally wrong? I mean, it is kind of interesting too, because I have people literally message me from jail in real life, asking about real estate and different stuff and to help them. And so if I can, I do try and help them. You know, it's a, uh, oh, that one I should have bought. Whoops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, you know, people make mistakes, I believe in second chances and who knows what people are in jail for too. But, um, in Upland, you're usually in jail for doing pretty egregious things. So what is everyone's opinion on that? So there we go. This may turn into nothing. This may just be some properties I'm buying for fairly cheap that, you know, never amount to much, but it could turn into something pretty cool at some point too. And then, yeah, some of these are pretty, oh, a lodge. That's cool. Let's see what that is. Now I've really piqued my interest. Oh. That'd be cool to get some named properties on here too. Not named, but it's a lodge and I'm sure it's an amazing lodge. <laughs> Is that it? That's the lodge. Hmm. Detroit's got some sweet properties. What was the mint? Very low mint. Let's just buy it. Why not? Like I said, worst case scenario, they'll make me a little bit of yield. I mean, not much, right? Cause I'm buying them for more than minting yield, but you know, a little bit. Happy foods, 39,000 for a named property. And um, there's really good videos out there too on this. Like having a named property really does not 200 bucks for a gas station add to the value in any way yet. Like gas stations don't, add to the value in any way yet for Upland itself is just the other players who might see them as having value later on or kind of gambling on what might happen with them later on, or just because it's cool to have a named property. So again, there's no extra value in a name yet, maybe later on, but who knows? So a lot of people love gas stations and are buying them up, but someone had a really good point too, in a video that, Hey, um, people tear down ga gas stations and build new gas stations all the time. Just because you have one gas station now doesn't mean it'll be a gas station later, gas station later. So there's no guarantee that Upland will do that either. So, um, yeah, all kinds of stuff here, but it's very expensive. Oh, come on. Where'd my properties go anyway? So how many did we buy? Four, five, 
let's look here. Let's see if we there's any more. We'll search by mints and see if there's a really crazy mints deal here. And then we'll be done. Because I my videos always go so long. <laughs> oh, not mint. Markov. What am I talking about? There we go. 115. It's expensive. There's a 133 at 22. It's okay, not amazing. So, still some good deals there. Is that kind of the best? We'll do this one too, just because that's kind of the best low price mint deal in there right now. And if you really want to drive the price up, like I said before, you could just buy all of the low price properties there are. Um, and if you keep doing that over and over, you might be able to drive up the price yourself. And well, we spent a good amount of money there. There we go. That's our little attempt. You know what? This is kind of like real life too, where if I end up getting money, I just buy more and more and more real estate <laughs> with it. <laughs> where was the, where's the Henry Ford thing? There it is. Let me see what is in Henry Ford tier because that kind of piques my interest here too because it's small and it's got a cool name oh that's markup 110 percent look at those you know it's so cheap is that the same person yep miss money we'll buy some of your properties miss money the best cheapest minted ones over there What was the other one? 1632. There it is. Look at that. That was good. Okay, so we bought some of those. And then let's look at the sale price, too. The cheapest ones there. What was it? 7,000? Yeah. Oh, it's pretty cheap. So, not a lot here. They're very cheap. But if a lot of people started buying here, and also it's the Henry Ford node and everybody hears that Henry Ford node, you know, these prices could raise pretty quickly. Okay. So I went on a little buying spree and bought two, three, four, five, six, eleven 11 properties in Henry Ford. No 10. I already had one on grand. So, uh, maybe I'll just see what happens if I keep buying properties there when they're cheap and go from there. There you go. All right. That's all it for now. I have to get back to my real life job. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate all the comments. Love seeing all the people chiming in yesterday. Love seeing the likes and shares. Keep that coming too. And we'll be, we will be back with much more coming here soon.